Hello everyone, my name is Ben Finkelstein. I've been working with Chaim, Evgeny and Uri um, in Vista, which is the, one of the computer science labs at Technion, uh, the Israel Institute of Technology. And our recent work uh, and paper named Single Node Attack for Fooling Graph Neural Networks um, is about an adversarial attack which just uses a single node uh, for its attack. Um, in comparison to the related work, the work before, which used multiple nodes and either multiple nodes or multiple edges. Okay, so why is it interesting? Uh, GNNs have shown broad applicability in a variety of domains, when, such, such as social networks, which is a, a very fertile ground for malicious behavior. Uh, so social networks are overall very important and the uh, uses and applications are very influential to our daily, daily, daily basis. And some users could act uh, in a malicious behavior and that could influence our GNN in some ways that we would not like it, that we would not like them to act. Um, for example, if you have a user which acts in a malicious behavior, you post an, a post which is overall benign, some posts uh, that could not be recognized as malicious or bad, that could influence uh, some other node which is somehow connected to it by like K hops away. And the GNN would suddenly classify said node to be invalid instead of valid, to be classified to any other target classification. Uh, previous works, as I've already mentioned, have dealt with multiple nodes or multiple edges. So uh, the attack has been stronger. Um, our, our paper deals with a single node attack, which means we only perturb the features of a single node. Our attack is named single. And we also added a competitor attack, which is named edge grad. Edge grad is allowed to change to perturb only a single edge. To either flip it, uh, to flip it in by either removing the edge or adding the edge. In addition to that, we've also included a, a white box approach for both of our competitors for the single and for edge graph, and we've also included a black box attack only for single. It's important to note that regular single uh, randomizes its attacker. We don't know which which user we're getting to be the attacker. However, we have some victim that we are focused on to attacking. Okay, it's also important to know that uh, we look at two settings. First setting is a non-targeted attack, and the second is a targeted attack. In a targeted attack, you have some classification, uh, a specific one, which is not the, uh, your correct label, and you want the model to classify as this specific classification. In a non-targeted attack, you don't care which classification you get as long as it's not the correct classification. Okay, so let's go on to our perturbations. Um, a single node perturbation, you can perturb all of its features and it could be very devastating if you don't limit it correctly. So for example, if you have uh, features which are between zero and one, uh, if you go over the, the limit of one, uh, the model could act differently and the perturbation could be just above one and it could be very devastating for the model. So we have to somehow limit our perturbation. Uh, we split our data sets into two. Uh, some of the data, data sets are gonna, going to be called continuous while the other are going to be called discrete. Conti continuous data sets are data sets that are represented by, by an continuous embedding. For example, TF-IDF, glove embedding, any embedding which could take most, uh, most numbers which are not discrete. For example, uh, for example discrete data sets could be, uh, could be data sets that are represented by a set of words representation or a bag of words representation. Such data sets are Quora and Tsitsir, where you have to make sure your, your uh, embeddings are 
either zero or one if they're in the set of all, or just an integer in bag of all representation. While in for continuous data sets, uh, you just need to make you don't have to make sure um, that you're that that you're embedding is somehow limited. So for continuous data sets, we limit the L infinity norm, which is the strength of each feature, and we clip it according to that norm. And for discrete data sets, we limit the number of features we are changing, or for the specific case of set of words, the, the number of features we are flipping, changing from one to zero. Okay, so how do we do this perturbation? We just do a simple gradient step. For non-targeted attacks, we go in the direction of the gradient, and for targeted attacks, we go in the opposite direction of the gradient. It's important to know that for targeted attacks, uh, we use our specific label that we want to go, we want to get the specific label we're targeting to get to. And for non-targeted attacks, we just use our correct label that we don't want to get because we don't care which other label we get as long as it's not the correct label. In continuous data sets, our algorithm goes over some number of epochs, some constant number of epochs, and after it's done, it clips according to, L, to the L infinity norm. In the discrete data set, for, for discrete data sets, we iterate over some constant number of iterations, okay, which is the number of attributes that we are allowed to flip. And we choose the attribute with the highest gradient, and we flip it, we change it, we change it from zero to one or from one to zero. And after we flipped some, for example, 10% of our attributes, we are done and we're checking uh, whether or not our attack succeeded. Okay, on to our black box and white box approach. These attacks are uh, deal with uh, deal with the way we choose our attacker node. In the regular variation single, we run them the attacker node. However, in grad choice, we choose the attacker node by looking at the gradients of each attacker, possible attacker, and choosing the one with the highest gradient. So, so the one that could be the most devastating. The black box approach, our single topology, we choose our attacker node according to some topological properties of the graph. We don't, we are not looking at the model and it's model free. And we are just following some promise or guarantees or some in, in some hope that our, our chosen attacker is going to be uh, strong. On to edge guard. Our competitor, as we've already mentioned, which just either inserts or flips a single edge. Um, it does so according to the gradient of the edges that are connected to our attacker. So our, we are limited to our attacker. In the section of global edge graph, we are no longer limited to the attacker and the edge can be chosen from the entire graph. We try to compare between edge graph and single and between global edge graph to single grad choice, which are both of our white box approaches. Okay, the comparison is, it, is indeed interesting, and you will see whenever edge grad is stronger than single, and when single is stronger than edge grad. But remember, one uses nodes and one uses edges. We just wanted to see how an attack that uses a single edge and how an attack that uses a single node look like, or act more likely. Okay, our main result. You can see that a, a single edge perturbation and a single node perturbation. Uh, more, it could be more devastating than multiple edges or multiple node perturbation. As long as you make sure to perturb uh, in the direction of the gradient or the opposite direction of the, of the gradient, depend on whether or not using non-targeted or targeted attacks. Okay, the results for our black box and white box approaches, you could also see that they're even stronger and our model does not hold any significant accuracy towards these results. We also analyzed and did an ablation study very thoroughly towards our um, L infinity and L zero norms and towards the different uh, GNNs. 
we wanted to see how this attack acts when you change your uh, L infinity, L, uh, L uh, zero, and then the GNN that it acts upon. So as you can imagine, the stronger, uh, the, the more power you give the attack, the higher epsilon zero or the higher epsilon infinity, the stronger it gets. In addition, we also wanted to see how this attack operates when the attacker node is further away from the victim node. So every time we, we looked at an attacker node, which is a bit further away from us, the victim node, and the further away our attacker is, the harder it is for him to attack. As you might have expected, he needs to walk around a longer, uh, longer effective range to get to the attacker victim, to the attacked victim. So to summarize, we show that GNNs are susceptible to the limited scenario of a single node indirect gradient adversarial evasion attack, our attack named single. We, show, we also show the single node perturbation and we showed it's stronger than a single edge perturbation, or we at least compared between the two somehow. And we, in addition, we showed that if the attacker can be chosen, it affects the attack significantly. And if it can be chosen, the, uh, the attack is way stronger. In addition, we also showed a single node perturbation attack, excuse me, and we compare, compared it to our single node. Uh, we, saw, we showed that single edge perturbation attack and we compared it to our single node. And we hope and believe that this will drive research towards expo exploring novel defense approaches for GNNs because the current situation of GNNs is they are very susceptible to attacks of a single node or either a single edge. Thank you very much. Um, any questions? <laughs>